Hey guys, welcome back, or Bomb here, bringing you another one of our live matchups. You guys seem to really, really enjoy the live matchups, so um, I'm excited to bring them, because these are these are the kind of content I like recording. You know, TCG is fun, but it gets kind of stale every now and then. We got to do some of these live games so I get to play, get to play the real things. Now today, oh, today we got a treat. Today is post-rotation 2017-2018 format, me or a Bomb in the right side of your screen because I'm correct <laughs> versus my boy Devin on the left side of your screen. Um, great guy. We are, he's a really good friend. Uh, shout out to Devin. He helps me out a lot. He actually gave me a bunch of cards in this deck that I needed like energies and stuff like that. But today we are playing post rotation decks, burning shadows. You're going to see some proxies and everything like that. Shout outs to Joseph, another one of my moderators, just like Devin is on my YouTube channel and everything like that. Um, he actually he actually buys Japanese cards, so he gave me some of his Japanese cards that I can go make photocopies of So I went to office max by the way It was a very difficult time getting this video together guys. I had to go get the copies office max get my get my Get my camera make sure it was charged. It was all a mess, but we managed to pull it all together uh, I am gonna be playing uh, I'm gonna be playing Gardevoir GX and my buddy Devin's gonna be playing Galissapod GX I did build both of these decks. We will see tomorrow and the day after that some deck, um, what's it called? Um, we're gonna talk about the deck. It's what? What is it called? A deck review? I, I'm doing. I'm like brain farting. It is like 3 a.m. when I'm recording this because I wanted to get this out for you the next day, which is I guess technically today. So <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and lead with Deancey. So I got really lucky with my lead. Deancey's a great card to have. I do. It's only one of the deck. By the way, ignore the Lele. Pro, uh, proxies clearly those are not the best proxies but that's the Deancey its first attack is um, choose one Pokemon on your bench and you can evolve it and which is great because what I could do is I could potentially evolve a Ralt I put down turn that Ralt into Curlia and then my during my next turn evolve that into Gardevoir to have a turn to turn to Gardevoir without the need for rare candy um, <clears throat> Devin had to lead Lele, which is unfortunate, but he did get a second Lele to play Bridget. He's going to put down a Wimpod, Fomantis, and Remoraid down. This is going to be, they're both play Octillery. This is Octillery with a Galissapod. Now, I'm not too sure why I put down Fomantis, um, because Gardevoir does have 230 HP, and this is the Lorantis build. I feel like the Lorantis build is the best build during post rotation, because there used to be Evolutions. I feel like Evolutions was probably the best beforehand, but now that we don't have Evolutions in the format, uh, or VF Seekers, or Lysander, or anything like that. I feel like Lorantis is going to be your best bet. But in this matchup, not really seeing Lorantis doing too much. Because you're never going to be able to hit the Oko numbers unless you play like four Lorantises, or maybe a Kakui and three Lorantises. So, um, I don't know. I feel like it's important to have multiple close pods down. So, that's something to keep in mind for the future. But he's going to touch an energy to Wimpod. That Wimpod has an ability is during your first turn, you ask for your retreat. So... Not the biggest deal in the world, but I'm going to play down a Lele, get myself a Bridget, get myself a couple of uh, Ralts down because I want to make sure I have three Gardevoirs at the very least. This also plays a, um, uh, it also plays a, what's it called, Gallade. So the goal is to just get everything set down real quick. Um, Dancy, well, yeah, tomorrow you'll see a deck review, I guess. I, I'm trying to think of the word that I'm looking for. I'm still stuck on it. It's bothering me, but we're going to go over the deck. Um, in-depth deck analysis. There it is. We're going to have a deck analysis, an in-depth deck analysis, because I'm really excited for this format because there's so many decks that can shine now in this upcoming format, and the format's so much fun to play, too. It takes real skill to play, which is great. Um, now, here, all I need is fairy energy. If I remember correctly, <laughs> I unfortunately didn't have a fairy energy this turn, so I'm just sitting there. I'm holding a DCE because I'm thinking about attaching it, but I don't think I can. I don't want to risk uh, attaching it just so that he can goose him up a Pokemon and knock it out. So he's going to evolve into Octillery and to Lorantis promo. So now his attacks do 20 more damage. He's going to play Super Scoop Up, which is a card being reprinted in our format. He's going to get Tails, unfortunately. Uh, attach a DCE there, though, because so he can still manually retreat if he needs to. <clears throat> he's going to draw with Octillery. He's trying to get that Galissapod just so he can do the big damage and knock me out this turn. Galissapod's main attack is uh, for one energy. 30 damage. If that Pokemon became an, the active Pokemon this turn, it does 90 damage, 90 more damage. So 
a one energy attacker for that does 120 damage. That's the purpose of this deck. It plays super scoop ups, Guzmas, and Acerolas. Guzmas switches you uh, while life centering out opponent. Acerola, if your damage puts you back into your hand with everything attached. With uh, having an only one energy attack, Acerola is very good in this deck. Guzma is very good because it's like a Lysander and an escape rope. Um, so you're mainly using its first attack. It has two other attacks. Its uh, second attack is Grass DCE, which is why you see the double colorless energies in the deck. It does 100 damage and means you take 20 less damage that turn. Not something you want to do because you usually just want to use that first attack and pull it off every turn. Um, and this third attack is 150 damage and it switches you out. So that's like a killer attack because you're doing 30 more damage than your first attack most of the time. Uh, as you see, I got my fair energy. So now this turn, I'm going to go ahead and evolve. The end was very good for me. I got a, what I got artillery. I'm going to, I'm going to discard a, it looks like a Ralts and another ultra ball. Just because I have a full bench of Ralts and I think I'm good now. I'm going to get a Curlia here. Figured that's my best bet. Uh, because I'm just probably going to evolve something into another Curlia. Maybe I get Rare Candy Gardevoir off of this Octillery too. I haven't played my Octillery yet. The cool thing about Octillery in this deck is that you have the room to play Gallade, and that Gallade really helps you out in the um, in the process. But I'm going to go ahead and play a Sycamore instead of play Octillery. Figured I'd rather do that first because if I drew cards, because I was going to Sycamore no matter what, right? So if I drew cards that I didn't want to Sycamore, it's going to be kind of annoying. But we do get another Ultra Ball, so I believe this gets us something. Depends what I have in my hand. But I got rid of a Field Blower and another and another Stadium. Uh, I, I do play I do play what's it called in this deck, um, and I got Gardevoir GX with it, uh, and I had to have Rare Candy, so I do have a turn two Gardevoir after all, which is great. Uh, no energies to use its ability. Gardevoir, if you guys don't know, has the ability to attach an extra fair energy from your hand to any of your Pokemon. So that stacks. So if I have three Gardevoirs on the bench, I can attach three extra fairy energies. So doing, doing that on top of attaching my DCs is always great. I'm going to attach a choice band there just to empty my hand so I can play uh, uh, so I can play Octillery. I do play three choice bands in this deck, so I'm not too worried about getting field blowers. And I am going to use Dancy's attack to evolve one of my Pokemon. <clears throat> Uh, I'm going to go with Ralts because I could evolve Curlia into Gardevoir, but if I have two Curlias down, then I can uh, react by evolving into either Gallade or Gardevoir next turn, or maybe getting both. And I just feel like it's a better play overall because it gives me more, more versatility for the next turn. Uh, over here, though, I'm having a little bit of issue getting energy, so we'll see what Devin does here to retaliate. Now, the cool thing, he's going to play N. Cool thing about Devin is that it's all one energy attack. So he has really good early game aggress aggression because he can hit big numbers before I evolve all of my Pokemon. But my setup was very good this turn, apparently, uh, this, this game, apparently. <clears throat> the only thing I don't like is um, you. Ha I, I feel like you need to have two Glyph Spots down. But at the same time, in this deck where you're kind of using Super Scoop Up and um, Float Stone and... Uh, Guzma stuff like that you have ways of getting just one glyph spot to work which I've done multiple times so glyph spot's a great mon I really really like it this is a long video too so oh, <laughs> I just realized I just realized because uh, I sped this up to 1.5 and it's still kind of long but regardless he's gonna ultra ball get another Lorantis promo down so now <clears throat> glyph spot's attack is doing 40 extra damage putting it at 160 damage that is enough to knock out a uh, Gallade so putting down those ranches do really help out on the Gallade math. If he gets a choice band, he'll be able to hit 190, um, which is I mean, a little bit overkill, but it does still knock out Lele's successfully. Uh, he's going to just choose to knock me out with the Lele's attack. And I'm going to go out into Gardevoir. Um, everything, Gardevoir does have, I believe, one or two retreat. I don't remember off the top of my head, uh, but it's a, it's a very low retreat cost. So, And I probably have Fairy Gardens in the back. Or Guzma or something like that. I'm going to Choice Band, play Ultra Ball here, get rid of Octillery and Remoraid um, to get myself another Gardevoir. And maybe I can get a Glyph Spot this turn as well, but I'm going to be using these Gardevoirs to attach energies. I need to attach as many energies as possible just so I can get these knockouts. I'll probably get a knockout on Lele this turn, maybe. It depends on how well I draw. I still have Octillery. I'm going to draw three off Octillery. I got Gallade. Uh, now, I am very tired when I'm recording this, just so that you guys know. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, you're going to see me forget to use Gallade a couple turns this game. I, I, I picked it up near the end of the game, so don't worry there. Just want to give you guys fair warning. I am going to use my ability to attach there. 
I did draw seven. So one ability to attach. I did attach choice band, not the other thing, but yeah. Using my first ability to attach. So still no manual attachments. I usually save my manual attachments for the DCEs since you can't, you can only attach fairy energies using Gardevoir's ability. By the way, I forgot to mention the attacks of Gardevoir. Gardevoir's attack does 30 damage for each energy attached to both active Pokemon. It is just like uh, Mega Mewtwo Y's attack. So right now, I apparently I whiffed on a bunch of energy and I was only able to hit 90, 120 with the choice band. Uh, ignore my phone in the background, but um, and then it's GX attack, which you're not going to see me use this game, but you're going to see it being used by Devin in the next game that's going up three days from now, because tomorrow is going to be a Gardevoir decklist, the day after that's going to be the Glisspot decklist, and then the day after that one is going to be the second match where we switch decks and play again. Um, but I whipped energies, and what was I saying? Oh yeah, you're going to see the GX attack be used. The GX attack is shuffle 10 cards from your discard pile back into the deck. Devin used it very well. So you're going to see Devin using it in the next game, in the next game that goes up on the channel. And by the way, guys, let me know what decks you want to see me play uh, with Guardians Rising, especially while we're hitting, sitting here waiting if, waiting for it to be on PTCGO. I did build a Neuvern decklist and a Alolan Muck decklist on the channel recently. Uh, he's going to get Guzma. He can't play it this turn because he played a Cerola earlier. Or, or, by the way, the AZs that we have are Ace Rollers. Just want to throw that out there. Uh, my buddy, my buddy Joseph, he got, he didn't get two point five. He got three Sun and Moon base at three. So I don't have any Ace Rollers copies to print. And <clears throat> I could have printed like the physical. I could have went online and printed a copy, but I was just making photocopies while I was around. Uh, he's just explaining to me that he can't use Guzma this turn. I thought he was going to use uh, Guzma this turn, but I forgot he used Ace Roller that turn. But he's going to hit me for the 120, 150 damage. When, um, oh, for something, I don't know. Well, regardless, what did he hit me for? I'm, oh, wait a minute, hold on. Yeah. Okay, never mind. I forget to say anything. The damage, I don't know what he attacked me for. Oh, no, they're all there. I'm sorry. I'm just colorblind. Yeah. Okay, he hit me for 190. For some reason, I saw the two black die, and I didn't see the other colored die. Anyways, we're good. He hit me for 190. Uh, I went ahead and used N, I believe. And we're going to see what we can do. We got some fairy energies. I am attaching them to the bench, trying to set up that one. In the meantime, I can ace a roll in the future. I do have free retreat thanks to fairy garden, so I'm not too worried about that. So now I have a DCE, fairy energy, and a choice band attached to that Gardevoir. So I'm going to be doing some big damage. Not enough for a knockout, unfortunately, which is bad because you can ace a roll uh, but hopefully he can't pull that off and the, the th but he does have a super scoop up and he gets the heads unfortunately so that's going to go back to the hand <laughs> and now he can set it back up again and Lele can come in and do some damage soften me up for Glisspot the following turn another great thing about Lele and the cool thing about this deck is that it, it really appreciates super scoop up because not only does oh by the way uh, he, he decided to go into he didn't want to go into that Lele he wanted to go into the one that that one that you just not put active. We gave each other some leeway rooms. This is our first time playing these decks. Um, he's really having a tough time deciding which Lele he wants to become active and which Lele he wants to attach his floatstone to. So he's not going to do it quite yet. But um, <laughs> the decks are a lot of fun to play. I was a huge fan of him. I tried to figure out what I was just talking about, but he is just going to attach the floatstone to that one. And the oh no, I guess not. Never mind. <laughs> Oh yeah, Super Scoop Up, that's right. Super Scoop Up is great because not only can Super Scoop Up be used to put your damaged Pokemon back into your hand um, with everything attached to it. Okay, he's on Flow Stone Deactive and retreated to the bench one so he can attack. Uh, he was trying to think of ways to use Ace Roll that turn, but he can't use them because none of his Pokemon are damaged. Um, I believe that's what he was telling me whenever we played this earlier today. But the uh, Super Scoop Up also has a really handy ability to put Lele's back into your hand. Uh, and then you could reuse the ability to search for supporters, which I feel like is very, very strong, especially without VS Seeker that gives you a little bit more supporter control than most players have. So I really like, I really like Super Scoop Up for that reason. I don't play any Super Scoop Ups on my Gardevoir deck because Ace Roll is really all you need. You don't have the room for a Super Scoop Up. I would love for there to be room for Super Scoop Up, and I'm going to be tweaking this Gardevoir deck with time. I'll be, you'll, see me, you'll probably see me play this a lot uh, on stream and stuff like that whenever the deck does come out. But for the time being, no super scoop ups in this deck. I really like the way the deck runs right now. It's, it was very consistent, very very good for me when I played it a couple times. I'm going to go ahead and Guzma bring out the Wimpod. I don't want him setting up that Wimpod. Um, 
<laughs> Wimpod is terrifying for me. I'm just going to go into Gardevoir and then switch right back out to that one because that one has enough energy to knock it out. I want to keep the one on the bench, the one that has 190 damage on it, safe for the time being. I'm attaching one energy to it uh, just to get energies out of my hand because I am going to Acerola it as soon as I can. But I'm going to get my knockout here, trying to prevent him from getting any Wimpods down because I don't want him be becoming another Glissbot. Glissbots are, uh, are becoming a problem. Because hitting for that, for hitting for two KOs for one energy is annoying because Gardevoir doesn't do that well. Because what I would need to have is six energies and a choice band attached to a Gardevoir to Oko Galispod, or seven energies um, with no choice band. So it's not incredibly hard to do because you have DCE and your abilities, but you, you it usually it will usually take two turns unless you have multiple Gardevoir set up or like three Gardevoir set up, I should say. Even three will only max you out at and have five attachments that turn, three fairy energies, one DCE. So you're still one short. He's gonna get the knockout with Lele because he got the choice band, luckily enough. Um, <laughs> I am gonna draw here. So I need to ace a roll of this turn, which is unfortunate. I am gonna attach a DC to, to uh, a DC to um, Gallade, that way I can at least do damage this turn. Um, I know it's not ideal because I'm not gonna get a knock and I'm gonna hit 160 max, which really sucks. I wish Gallade hit for 10 more, but Regardless, I want to Acerola for sure this turn. I don't want that my damage Gardevoir down. I have two, I believe I have two rare candies in my hand. I have a very heavy count of evolution, four rare candies, uh, that Deancey, and as well as a 4-3-3 four, three, four, three, three line of uh, Gardevoir. So I am going to Acerola here. I'm going to put down the Ralts, uh, Choice Bandit. And I should be able to have a Gardevoir relatively easily next turn. I'm going to choose to just do the damage here we we're just talking about how weird of a play that was but to me i was very confident in that play because i didn't want my guard to be knocked out it's a very important part of the deck so i need to make sure i can keep it alive and uh glades i can ace roll glade next turn if i need to and just make it two guard of wars glades only there as a nice as, as a luxury it's not necessary that's why and also this is what i was talking about earlier you see me not use Gallade at all this game i'm really tired when i was recording this and uh, I, did, I completely forgot about using Gallade at all and because i wasn't drawing with artillery because my hand was really full the majority of the game and it was full on purpose i had really good cards there that i didn't want to use quite yet i was saving them um lots of energies lots of rare candies um just being very very careful with what i play that way I can uh, use the right combination of cards at the right moment of time just to get my knockouts. <clears throat> now, even though I did do the damage, he did Acerola, uh, which is fine because uh, that other one had three energies. This one's only gonna have two, so it's not gonna do as much damage, which means I'm safer to Acerola um, this Gallade right now while keeping my other Pokemon uh, healthy. He's trying to decide what he wants to do here. He's going to attach a DC to that one. So once again, he's not going to knock me out. But he's going to play down another Lele. Uh, I guess he's looking... I don't know what he's looking for. But he already played Ace Roll this turn, so he can't really get anything crazy. Or play anything crazy. But that's a cool thing, man. You can Ace Roll, put the Lele's back, and then search for another supporter. He's going to get Sycamore. I don't believe he can play it right now. I'm just taking a look at his deck to see what's left in there. And I could... I'm gonna get I'm probably gonna get a knockout on this Lele next turn because I'm gonna retreat the Gallade. Well I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna ace a roll of the Gallade. Bring and have a Gardevoir ready with three energies that puts five with a choice band that's a 180, which will be a knockout. So let's see if I can get that playoff. Oh yeah, DC there. Rare candy into Gardevoir. Use his ability to attach an extra fairy energy. Um Let's see. Let's see what else I do. This, okay. Just oh, I'm using premonition this turn before I forget. So I'm looking at the top five cards in my deck. Um, not really. I can't really see what I'm putting on the top of the deck, so I'm not too worried about it. But uh, I obviously it's gonna be something useful, at least somewhat useful. Although I do remember having a tough time figuring out what cards are gonna be useful this game. Um, I am put down Ralts, attach a choice band to it. I know I have a rare candy and Gardevoir in my hand as well. So I know I'm going to be able to play those down next turn. But I do have enough energies to knock it out. Like I said earlier, to, I do exactly enough to knock it out being at 180. And he's going to have to choose a new active. He's going to choose Lele. Does he want to do that? Um, I don't know if he changed his mind here or not. But I think he was fine. 
yeah, he's going to put down a wind pod, uh, attach a grass energy. So now he has another glyph pod pretty much ready to go in the next turn, unless I get a Lysander or a Guzma playoff here. Choice band attached to it. But yeah, because he has all these Fomancuses down, I'm trying to punish him. I did change it, by the way, guys. Uh, it's different in this video than it was in the last video. It's going to be in different. The deck list is going to be slightly different in this video than it is going to be in the um, in the deck analysis video where I did change out a line of uh, of Fomantis Lorantis. I did play a 3-3 line. I cut it down to a 2-2 line, add a couple more cards that I felt like were good. Once again, these are our first times playing the deck, so everything is up in the air as far as what is great and what isn't great. Um, I am going to use my energy here, uh, my ability to attach an energy to attach to Octillery because I can attach to whatever I want. He did go into Fomantis and Synthesis so I can attach an energy from his deck to uh, Glyspod, which is fine. Um, but here, I'm kind of regretting attaching this energy to Octillery. I, I did that way too fast. I should have thought before I did that because I'm going to, I'm going to, um, what's it called this turn? I'm going to use uh, Guzma this turn, which is going to switch me out anyways. Um, or I was thinking about using Guzma this turn, which is going to switch me out anyways, which, uh, which I decided against because I was going to hold on to the Guzma and just use it to knock out Lele for game, uh, if he doesn't put Lele back into his hand. So, at first I was like, I wanted Guzma this turn, then I was like, ah, whatever, I'll just take advantage of the play I made. So I manually switched out instead of, uh, use Guzma, but I know I had Guzma in his hand and I was really upset about it, but he did land the scoop up. So that's when I was really upset. I was like, man, if I just did the, the, um, the Guzma play instead of what I was doing just then, I would have got at least two prizes, but it's not too bad. I mean, as long as I have artillery, I'm not too worried about ends. But he's going to do some big damage here because he is banded. So he's going to do, once again, 190 damage. I have to be very careful about this. So I'm trying to think of ways I can win next turn. I have to knock out this Glisspot if I win next turn. The way to do that is to have either seven energies on my non-banded um, Guardi or... or um, six energies on my banded guardy which means regardless i have to attach three energies one way or another which is easy enough get a dce and a fairy energy or three fairy energies um which i have to make sure i'm very careful about my deck is running dangerously low so i have to look through my deck to see if i have exactly what i need he's going to go ahead and ultra ball for another wind pod i have two prizes left which means i just i my, my main focus here is to knock out this glow spot because he can also win this game if i'm not careful he has three prizes left so all he has to do is knock out a gardevoir and an octillery or even even a um <clears throat> even a uh lele because he can do that fairly easily thanks to those lorantises but he's just looking at my cards there's my band we want to make sure that it was there and he's going to go ahead and field blow get rid of my choice band which means now i have to attach <laughs> three extra energies to my um, Gardevoir to get the knockout. No, four extra energies, because I have to have seven energies. So yeah, I have to have four extra energies on my Gardevoir, which means DCE, two fairy energies. The only way to do with the active one, and I have to attach four to the bench one as well, because the four only has a DCE attached. So my quest now is to get four energies this turn. I have both Gardevoirs, and I know there's a DCE left in the deck somewhere, or if it's in my hand or in the deck, one or the other. Let's take a look here. I am an Ultra Ball. I'm going to use this time to look through my deck. I am going to get rid of both my Curlias. That's all I have left in the deck. I know I have a Sycamore in hand. Looks like I have the two energies in my deck that I need, and I believe I have DC in hand as well. So I believe I have game right now. Let's take a look. Mm. Yes, I'm going to grab Lele with the Ultra Ball just to get something out of the deck. Um, I'm probably going to use Lele to get Sycamore. Field Blower, do the Choice Bands just in case I can't pull this off, DCE, uh, Fairy Attachment um, with using Ability, and there you go, I just, I just showed him all the all the energies that I do have, and yep, I showed him Sycamore, I showed him the Fairy Energies I was going to use, boom, bam, just showing him that I get game. <laughs> so there we go, that's the fa that's Gardevoir, man, Gardevoir is the deck that at first, I'm going to be completely honest, guys. I did upload those videos with Sticks saying that I'm not too sure how I feel about Gardevoir. What I didn't realize at the time of saying those things is Gallade. Gallade completely changed my mind when it comes to these Gardevoir builds. Because we have Gallade, it's easier to see what you can play. Uh, you guys know I'm a huge fan of Octillery Mallow. Well, Octillery Gallade is like a lesser version of it. Gallade's a great attacker. It's your fighting type attacker. It's a non-GX attacker. Um, and easy to set up you're gonna see a black stream for a little bit easier to set up because of um 
because of Gardevoir and the fact that you play DCs already. So drop a like if you guys like this video, subscribe, share all the good jazz. I'm working really hard to get this video out for you guys right away because I want this video out right away. I'm really excited about it. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Let me see what, let me know what decks you want to see me play in the, in the future. Let me know what video, what, um, what deck analysis you want to see me upload first. Gardevoir, excuse me, Gardevoir or um, Galissapod. Anyways, drop a like, subscribe, share all the good jazz, and I will see you guys next time. Peace.